Okay, a very big welcome tonight to Denby Dale Amateur Radio Club, uh, one of our regular online meetings. I'm not sure how many we've done since uh, we first went into lockdown in 2020, but it seems to be an awful lot, uh, and we're carrying on with some great speakers coming up. Uh, tonight's meeting, um, I'm really pleased to welcome them. We've got Lloyd, M5 LDF, and Phil, G6 EES, both of whom we've met before because we've had a couple of joint meetings with Newbury Amateur Radio Society over the last couple of years, but very pleased to welcome them uh, to give us a talk about all the work that they did in preparing for and uh, being accepted for and making a station contact with the International Space Station uh, with uh, a, a local school and a, a very special school because it turned out to be a world first, but I'll leave Lloyd and Phil to tell us a story about that. So really big welcome to them. Um, and uh, we, I think we're all looking forward to it. For those of you that are Radio Society of Great Britain members, uh, there was a very nice feature uh, over a couple of pages uh, on this contact in the January edition of RAGCOM. Um, I did screenshot it when I did the advertisement on our club Facebook page. But if anyone wants a copy of the article and hasn't seen it, just drop me a note and uh, I'll, I'll send you a copy of that, uh, that article. So, Lloyd, I'm going to hand the microphone over to you and uh, let you take it away. Oh, thank you, Nick. Um, yes, well, and what a time it was, I must admit. The... Um, the whole event was, um, well, different to say the least. Um, what I'll do is I'll just um, share my screen. I'm sorry, I'm a bit rusty with, with uh, Zoom. So I'm hoping I'll be pressing the right buttons. Right. So hopefully you should have a... A nice yep. space station. Lovely Brilliant. picture, Lloyd. Yep, beautiful picture. Excellent. <laughs> I do know how to do it, honest. Okay, so um, I, th I thought tonight I wouldn't do a full PowerPoint because um, it's not really a PowerPoint thing. So I thought what I'd do is just do a few little slides of an introduction at the beginning and then I'll, I'll just basically explain everything that we did uh, or tried to do or wanted to do. It's probably the best description. Um, so thank you, Nick, and uh, thank you f uh, to Denby Dell for inviting me over tonight. Um, Phil's going to jump in when, when needs be, when I've forgotten what it is I'm supposed to be saying. Um, so, here we go. So who's M5 LDF? Uh, my name's Lloyd. I'm a, a NADARS committee member, uh, and I'm also on the training team. I'm also the um, the courses secretary. secretary. Um, so if any of you need to do any courses, and we are running a intermediate course very soon, just a little plug there. Um, I obviously hold a full license, and I first took my license well back in 1994, uh, and sadly failed the part one. I thought it was a good idea to just jump in and uh, uh, and just take an exam without doing any reading up first, and you know I was very mistaken. Everyone. When we when they found out, said, uh, "Oh, it's funny. Everyone else fails the part two. Why did you fail the part one? Well, didn't read. That was basically it." So um, here I am now. Anyway, thanks to to Nadars, they uh, they got me uh, got me through. And radio is one of the things that's really interested me for many many years. Um, my brother, who isn't an amateur but is a, an extremely intelligent person unfortunately unlike me and he was telling me how radio amateurs were using television and sending pictures and bouncing signals off the moon and I thought well this is just fantastic so when I grew up I uh, I got interested in it uh, my background is um, particle astronuclear physics although ask me any question about it and I'll go uh, I can't remember because it was a long time ago so, why did I decide that I wanted to get a school involved with um, talking to the space station, or an astronaut on the space station? And it goes back many years ago, again, before I was actually licensed, and it was in the 1990s, I used to run a small 
program um, called the Young Astronaut Space Program. And I used to go to schools and colleges and um, museums and do all sorts of things like that and give talks about man's achievements in space. Now this is uh, this is one of the little flyers that I've uh, I've put on there and say there's a a very very handsome young man there. Uh, oh, oh my laser pointer. There we go. Very handsome young man there in the corner. And as you can imagine that was um a fair few years ago. And I heard about the space station taking up uh, amateur radio equipment with them and I got very interested in that I thought this is this is something that could be added into the um, you know into the into the program Stop and I, I oh, hello <laughs> um, so I uh, I got I looked into it and it was called Sarex and it was basically the space station that not the space station sorry the space shuttle that took amateur radio equipment in and would do contacts mainly just as they were flying over the the astronauts a few of them were were licensed amateurs uh, so I contacted an amateur in uh, in Leek in Staffordshire I, I lived in the Midlands I lived in Stoke-on-Trent uh, his name was John Goonie a G7HIJ and I said to him would you be able to talk to the space station for me and he, we looked into it and we said, yes, it can be done. We spent hours and hours sorting it all out. And it was, unfortunately, total failure. <laughs> so uh, so that was the beginning. So a long time ago. Um, so I, I won't say I realised, finally realised my dream. But um, <laughs> I, uh, I did finally do it with, with Mary Hair. So... Let's talk about Mary Hare. All right, I just need to change screens. Hmm, everything's gone black. There we go. How about that? There. That's better. Okay, so um, you're not you're not sharing a screen. No, no I'm just sharing it now. It's just you're coming on. up now. Oh, okay, right. Okay, yeah. yeah, sorry, I'm I'm swapping screens because I didn't want to run it in PowerPoint. It didn't doesn't run very well in PowerPoint for me. No problem. No, no problem. Okay, has it come back up now? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. There we go. Excellent. Okay, so I'll just run this. It's got no sound at the end at the beginning, but hopefully it does go into some sound afterwards. <laughs> for Mike Hotel November. Are you receiving? Over. Are you receiving? Over. Golf Bravo 4, Mike Hotel November. This is November Alpha 100. Hi, I'm Rosie. Do you have to learn the sign language to communicate if the radios in your suit goes wrong? We to communicate that we're in trouble or that we're okay. Even things a little more complex like it's very different up there and down here and I just knew that I had to do something with my life to do with theirs and so I brought in the sign language because when I was in primary school I learned how to sign and it was just a very good chance to ask them if they know sign language as well to see if it is something like up there than down here. I have to say I'm very excited but the first time I was very nervous. It's good to write history to be the first ever deaf people to actually talk to astronauts. It was a great opportunity and it was amazing that they responded to me, it was really cool. Well, I hope you got that. <laughs> And, uh, and you've got the screen as well. 
So, uh, stop sharing. Let's go back to me again now. Okay, so how did it all begin? Well, as I said, I, I gave you the 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 history of why I wanted to do it. Uh, and once um, I joined NADARS, I said, I, I sent an email to the committee. I said, um, why don't we do a a uh, speak to the astronaut on the space station? I said, it's the, there's a group called ARIS that do it. And uh, it's all, you know, you, you fill in an application form and you pick a school. It's all really easy. Excuse me, and uh, not expecting anything to come back about it, um, I got an email back saying, "Yes, very good. Please come up to the committee meeting next week and let's discuss it." So I thought, "Well, that's that's good." So I went up to the committee meeting, and I was then co-opted onto the committee, which was a bit of a surprise. Uh, and here I still stay. Um, and the first question was, "Well, that's that's really good." Uh, what school have you got in mind? I said, well, I don't know. I live in Andover. I don't really know any schools. Um, I said, I was hoping that you'd you'd be able to, you know, have some ideas for, for, for you know, a Newbury school. And Jeremy, um, the chairman at the time, said, how about Mary Hare School? I thought, well, that's, that's brilliant. Um, You know why? Why Mary Hare? Oh well, um, one of our former, our former president, uh, Gus, was was the um, is the uh, principal's son. I said, well, that's excellent. You know, we we don't need to explain amateur radio to him, and uh, you know, it, it's it's going to be quite easy. So I got all the paperwork sent done and then we sent it to the school and they said yes yes fantastic we'll, we'll do that uh, we had a meeting and we arranged to meet on the specific day and Jeremy rang, rang me he said um, where are you I said well I'm at work he said you're supposed to be here today it's uh, the meeting at the school I thought, oh I'd put it down as a, the wrong day in my diary so I thought well you know there's there's one little issue gone that's fine we, we're not going to get any more and we, 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 well, Jeremy gave the presentation, explained it all out. They said, yes, yes, fantastic. We'll assign the science teacher as the, the lead in the, the, with the school. And, um, and then it'll all go swimmingly. So fine. We filled out the paperwork. We sent it off. And... Uh, I, I don't know if any of you have looked into into doing one yourselves, but the the ARIS team you submit an application twice a year between February and March, and then you get uh, a yes or no back in April, and basically that's for the first half of the following year, uh, and then there's another application August to September, I think it's August to September. Uh, you get a reply back in October, and then that's for the second half of the following year. So we were all sitting there with bated breath, and I got a, a letter back saying, congratulations, you've been accepted onto the ARIS program. Um, the question we'd like to ask is, um, how do you plan to get deaf students to hear and speak to an astronaut? And I, I sat there and I thought, I've missed something here. It's it's. I'm not quite sure what what they mean about that. So I googled the Mary Hare School, and found that yes, it's a school for the deaf. And I thought, perhaps nobody thought of mentioning it to me. But you know, we we've, we've now got some huge challenges on our hands. Uh, and so we we had a a uh, a meeting with the school, and I said. How how are we going to do this? How are we going to get the contact? Um, how are we going to make it? How how are the children going to hear? And the uh, the school have a no sign language policy. So the, it, during classes, the the students have to lip read. Uh, 
and they they have cochlear implants in in their in their ears as well uh, so that does help them hear but they still need to um, lip read and not use sign language so I thought well I know it, when Tim Peake contacted um, I forgot what school it was now uh, they had video so I went back to Aris and said do, do the you know does the amateur TV system still work there and they said no Tim Peake broke it and uh, it's now back on earth to be fixed um, we don't know when it's going to go back up so I thought well that's that out then straight away and the next thing we went I went back to the school and said well how else can we do it uh, and we did finally agree on um, having a sign language interpreter um, although the school say they don't they don't agree with it they think they feel that the children should be just the same as anyone else and should basically be able to communicate with everybody and anybody so okay we'll have a sign language interpreter that's good we can also um, they can also have someone repeating the words so uh, they can they can lip read while it's happening and they can also have a um, what they call a palantypist which is it's basically a stenographer so they'll type the words and it will come up in subtitles on the screen so everything was, was was agreed I sent all that back off to Aris and they said well, fine okay that's it it's a go so I crazily went around trying to sort out the equipment Aris give you this huge great big list of equipment that you need and uh, basically it's two complete stations and then there's also a backup um, repeater station somewhere else so I, I I thought right okay I, I've not really got much of this equipment so I put out begging letters to everybody I know including companies for cable and, and everything else and everyone came back yep yep we've got that we've got that and I sent it all off to Aris and said this is what we're going to be using I've uh, I've built a, an antenna that's circularly polarized uh, we're going to be loaned a uh, an Altaz rotator everything's fine and they turned around and said well we don't want to worry you but the whole world's going to be watching this because it's going to be a world first the the um, the powers that be at Aris at sorry at NASA and ESA are really interested in how this is going to go out so you know all the all the big people are going to be watching and I think that's when reality hit and it it suddenly well I, w I wasn't quite sure what was going on and I thought I don't know if I want to do this anymore it's 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 getting a bit big and however Aris then turned around and said we'll supply all the equipment uh, we'll set up the stations and obviously the the, the, the background the um, the emergency station just in case I thought, well that's that's fantastic that's now taken a load off my mind and so we went to do a site visit with uh, Kieran who's the Aris I'm sorry I'm not using call signs but as you probably noticed in in my video or the video of the contact I'm not very good at remembering call signs including my own um, so we went to do this site visit and the place that we decided to do it was is basically the school's auditorium uh, it's um, called the Arlington Arts Centre fantastic venue really was uh, but it's in a dip and on the western side of it which is where the, the space station will will rise there's quite a large hill with trees on the top and so we we had to have a very large uh, tower mobile tower come in with the with the aerials on top the antennas on top the <laughs> it, it wasn't going to be a huge problem but it, it, it was going to cause us some attenuation at the very beginning and if if you watch the video in full I tried to, to download it tonight or, or to watch it tonight and it seems the audio seems to be corrupt on it so I don't know um, 
what's going to what's going wrong on that. But um, I think we've got a copy of it somewhere anyway. But um, so yes, we've got this hill on the on the western side, the the acquisition side, and then it's fine going off to the east. So everything was sorted and all getting ready. And then we had this thing called COVID. I don't know if any of you have heard of it. Uh, and everything was postponed. We were due to go in um, April last year. And they they suddenly said, no, they're, they're all cancelled. Um, you need to make a new application. And I'm thinking, great. That's, you know. The, the pressure of everything that's gone on, they're now saying we can't do it. So, okay, I uh, I put in a new application and uh, kept my fingers crossed. I heard nothing and I heard nothing. And I still heard nothing. And then we had another lockdown, of course. And, uh, and then eventually I got an email saying, right, you, you're going to have a contact and it will be one of these dates please pick a date and it, it ranged from um august to december basically but there was a few dates in in the in in the middle of them uh and so we picked the date and the schools obviously closed in some and the other times were, were not ideal so we got it and I thought, well, that's excellent. I don't need to worry about the, the application again. So it all carries on. We get there and <laughs> the uh, the Sunday before the, the contact, Aris team arrive. It's brilliant. Uh, Phil, myself and um, JC, um, 2E0JCC, is it JCC or JJC? See, I've told you I'm not very good on, on course signs. Uh, we arrived to set up the the uh, NADAR stand because we wanted to demonstrate what we could, or what, what the radio amateurs could, um, what, what, what way we could benefit children with, with hearing disabilities. Uh, so we we demonstrated slow scan TV. We slow scan. Uh, we demonstrated um, FT8 and, and other other digi modes. Just to say, you know, it's not just talking. Uh, it's it can be a visual thing as well. So that was all set up, and the the team are starting to set their equipment up, and then. They got a call. The Land Rover towing the antenna uh, or the mast has broken down. It was it was stuck in traffic, and then it's broken down. One one of its front tires blew out. So oh, that's brilliant. But I thought that's it. That's it. It's brilliant. That that is the the glitch for the mission. All all space missions have a glitch, and that's it. That was the glitch for the mission. So I thought that's brilliant. There's, there's nothing can go wrong now. The uh, they they eventually arrived something like six hours late. Set the mast up. We all got it going. The following day we were doing um, setting the equipment up and doing some tests. And the children were were doing dummy runs, and it was all brilliant. And I got a a message from the the teacher. Uh, saying, oh, uh, bad news, we haven't got a palantypist. Uh, oh, well, that's pretty much the most critical thing that we needed, so the children could at least understand what was being said to them. So I go, I, I guess, right, okay, so what are we going to do? And he says, it's okay, um, I forgot the name now, Jill in HR is a very quick typist, so we're going to get her to come down, and we're going to present word onto the screen behind the children and she's going to type in really quickly what they're saying and it will come up on the screen in the background so we pri we we trialed this and it was it was appalling it did not work in any way shape or form so I thought okay right so that's the second glitch for the mission what are we going to do 
and lots of lots of thoughts were made and in the end thought well we'll we'll have to go with it there's nothing else we can do fine okay so we all go home for the night and um the following day we get up bright and early and go down and set up and one of the aris team who um who does all the audio side and the the video side of it actually stayed up until three o'clock in the morning that night writing some software to enable Jill from HR to type onto the screen so it was just coming up as subtitles and it worked a treat it was fantastic I thought that's it that's brilliant the next little thing that came to us we were doing the the final practices and um, well not practices we were doing the final, you know, getting everything ready, ready for the, for the start. And they came up and said, um, we haven't got a sign language interpreter. I said, what do you mean you haven't got a sign language interpreter? I said, yeah, we we, uh, we forgot to ask anyone to do it. <laughs> right, okay. So you had two jobs. You had to get a palantypist and a sign language interpreter. But you didn't do either of them. So I'm thinking, okay. It's fine, it's fine. And they said, oh, um, one of the students is really good. No, no, we're, we're, we've got the palantite, we've got the, the, the subtitles coming up. That's just got to work. That'll have to work. So, and uh, and that was it. So we're, we're now all geared up. We hadn't got our palantipist as planned, but we've got something just as good. We haven't got a sign language interpreter, but we're going to cope without it. The children are all fantastic, keen and professional. They're queued up, ready on the stage. We do a, a little bit of a preliminary thing. It was about 45 minutes beforehand. I gave a, a bit of a talk. Um, I'm not one for talking, by the way. I don't know if you've noticed that. Um, I gave a little talk about amateur radio and and what you know what it can be for for anybody of any age, uh, and then. Um, the teacher gave a little bit of a talk explaining what was happening and then there was a, a talk by the basically the ARIS team and uh, that was it was really good it was a question and answer thing that, that went down really well so then it came to the uh, came down to it but in the meantime I was sitting, sitting, thinking, whew, that was it, I've done my talk, that's the hard part. I've only got to, 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 you know, make the contact now. And the teacher pushes past me with a laptop and turns it towards the stage. And I thought, well, that's, that's a bit strange. So I went up, started, and I started calling. And... As I've already explained, I'm not good on call signs. So I, I can't remember how many different times I actually said, um, Mike, <laughs> well done, um, GB4 uh, MH, it was GB4 MHN. So uh, Golf Bravo 4, Mary Hare, November, no, no, Mike, anyway, so many times I got it wrong. And I started the call. So, as you saw on the uh, on the little video clip there, I started making the call, and I called once, and there was just static, nothing. Give it a few minutes, or a few seconds, I should say. It felt like minutes, and uh, called again. Again, nothing, just static. I was thinking, oh, this is it. Deja vu, this is just like 1990 when I was trying before. Another call. Nothing. But then there was a break in the static. Oh, that's encouraging. Made another call. And bang, it came back. Um, GB4 MHN, this is NA1S. NA1SS. See, I can't even do it now. I'm not even saying it phonetically. And I thought, oh, that's it. Um, I won't say a tears welled up, but it was very, very close. It was fantastic. So 
I straight away handed uh, the microphone or passed the microphone over to uh, Rosie, who was the first student up. And in true professional school child style, she just answered the question perfectly. No fluffing in the lines like me. It was fantastic. She got her answer. The next one came up, asked, asked their question. Uh, they then, we had like a little rotor. They, they, they asked the question. They move around to another part of the stage so they could read the answers and, uh, and coming back. And uh, all four students, uh, sorry, four, all students were fantastic. They really were fantastic. Um, one of them, Jacob, um, was not only deaf, but he was also blind. So he had to be led onto the stage and he asked his question. And you just think, this is this is so fantastic that a child who is visually and orally impaired are able to speak to an astronaut who's, you know, flying flying overhead. And I think that's that was the whole thing. We we ended the, the contact and uh so we we gave the, the uh gave the astronaut a, a huge round of applause and he see as he said he, it made his day. It's it certainly made ours. It was fantastic. And I looked into the audience and there the teachers there were some teachers who were in tears because because of what had happened and you think that just says it all it's it was it was well worth all the pain and all the suffering <laughs> and uh, and would I do it again no no definitely not I uh, I think I aged considerably uh, over the, the over the months that it uh, that it took to, to arrange and organise and, and pull it off. But it was fantastic. It really was fantastic. And and that's it. So um, has anybody anybody got any questions they'd like to ask? I don't want to keep talking all night. So, <laughs> Lloyd, Lloyd, before we open it up, that was absolutely brilliant. And uh, you. while you were talking, um, Phil put up on the chat the link to, on the NADAR's website, the video of the entire... Uh, ah, brilliant. Call. And I was just having a quick look myself. And if you go to uh, between 46 minutes and 49 minutes, that's those three minutes when you were stood on the stage making that call. And then when you stopped the call, all you could hear was the static. And I think every one of us watching you tonight describing that can feel the anxiety and the pain that you were going through at that moment. <laughs> there was a lot of that. There was a lot of that. And I, I'd just like to say, I mean, every time I've, I've, I've spoken, I've always said I, I need to thank Phil because um, let's just say I'm very relaxed on, on everything I do. Um, and Phil kept everybody, and I mean everybody, even Aris, focused and on track at all times and everybody knew what they were doing so uh so i'd like to thank again thank phil for for everything he did to i'm sure we wouldn't have made an excellent contact if it wasn't for phil so for me all, all i was i was just the front man just standing there um the 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 background phil um for say for organizing and, and keeping me on in track and on focus and uh, and also john who who um was manning the stand at all times he was there for three days manning the stand uh while we were playing around and he, he thoroughly enjoyed it so all of us were you know thoroughly enjoyed it and yeah <laughs> so Thank Lloyd, you again. Lloyd, I'm, I'm, I'm going to open it up to questions, but okay. we've, we've, got a, we've got a lovely visitor tonight who has himself already contributed to chat while you were talking, and that's Liam from South California, KN6EQU, who I know has also had experience of making quite a few of these Aris contacts. So, Liam, can I hand the microphone over to you? And uh, you, you added your two halfpence worth as well. Yeah. Well, thank Hi. you for that intro. Um,
Uh, yeah, so, and to be clear, although I have a technical license, I was never on the business end like you were, Lloyd, um, actually, you know, conducting the the literal contact in that way. I've, I've been in the room and been involved in about uh, uh, over a dozen um, ARIS contacts in the USA. Yes, you can probably tell I have a little bit of an English accent left after living here for 25 years now, um, uh, maybe even more. Um, so, yeah, so what, what you shared, Lloyd, you know, brought back memories of the kinds of, of challenges that, that uh, are presented when you do something like this. So uh, real, you know, real on the ground, so to speak, uh, you know, trials and tribulations that can happen. So extraordinary. <laughs> and you do just, uh, you know, move forward. And uh, the person uh, who really runs ARIS uh, really worldwide is, is uh, Frank Bauer. And, uh, you know, part of the thing that he always does when he starts these is to remind everyone it's an experiment and things can go wrong. Yeah. Um, and so it was real visceral to sort of go through those steps. I think it's extraordinary what uh, what you shared uh, about how you discovered, oh, this isn't just an ordinary school and all of those challenges and you just worked with it. I think that is such a great learning experience <laughs> for everyone. So, yeah, and I seriously, I wanna, I don't know, just on behalf of the entire world, uh, thank you so much for thank you. You know, thank not you. giving up and uh, creating something unique for every person who has those kinds of challenges that they're dealing with. And uh, that was one of the comments I put into the chat was that Aris really does look for those kinds of contacts that break new ground. You know, it can be different, you know, contacts with different areas, different communities around the world. Um, but it can also be legitimately breaking through into a whole new community, uh, which you've done, which is deaf blind, um, you know, in, in that context. And yeah. it brings up all of those questions. Well, can I be an astronaut if I have these issues? And then there's, there's answers to that. And ESA is going to some to some extent to uh, make it more accessible. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, so so that's that's what I got from everything you shared. And it really points to, you know, although amateurs here, right? Amateur, the ham radio, it's amateurs, but the professionalism and the can do and don't give up attitude, I think, just represents the best of what we can do. So yeah. that's why I love doing this and uh, why I wanted to hear what it was like uh, on the other side of the pond now um, for, for that kind of school contact. You did such a great yeah. job. I, Thank, you. I, Thank you. It is something that Aris is undoubtedly proud of. Uh, in terms of what to, what what was created there, so thank you. Thank you very much. So I will just say, um, when I did give my uh, introduction talk at the school, you, I think if you if you watch it through, uh, I did steal Frank's line saying this is an experiment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will definitely watch the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> tremendous! Okay. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Liam, before I, again, before I open up to questions, that, that takes us back to that wonderful moment in the, uh, the Tom Hanks film about the Apollo 13 mission. And uh, when, the, when they discovered what it was they were going to have to do to, to save themselves on that, uh, on that disaster. And I'm guaranteeing that every single radio ham watching that said, that's the kind of solution a radio ham would have found to that problem you know what can what can we bodge what can we what can we fiddle with and repurpose to solve this terrible problem we've got and uh, and i think to a degree what, what you just said is right there liam you know lloyd and the others involved in this down at newbury suddenly had to very quickly didn't you think on your feet to uh, to yeah. uh, you yeah. know deal with these challenges you face but well done brilliant thank you yeah Right, let's open it up to questions. Any questions, comments, anyone wants to make in the audience yet? Yeah, Gerald, over to you. All right, unmute. Uh, 
Lloyd, that was fantastic. <laughs> it brought back Thank memories. You. I was lucky, lucky enough to be at a school uh, not far from here when they had the same similar contact. It was probably the first primary school. It was the young young children, and the, the, they were the stars of the show. Actually, the, the, the space bit was was us, but uh, the, the the children were so involved in it. This it was absolutely amazing to watch, and that, that's yeah. the big reward. I think you'd agree. It is, yeah. <laughs> Well, sorry, something I, I did forget uh, to mention is, oh, I forgot the name. That's so, such a shame. Um, Rosie? No, no. Um, the, uh, the the one that was 13, but she was very small. Yeah, I was going to say, it's the smallest one. I've actually got her on the screen right now. She's choosing. She yeah. What did she say to you after yeah. the event, Lloyd? She, she came off the stage and she goes... That's changed my life forever. Yes. And I think that it was, it, it was, you know, it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic that something so simple could really make it such a big difference to, to a 13 year old. And um, so I hope that, you know, she, she'll go on and, and this will encourage her to go on to, to maybe not be an astronaut, but to have something involved in the, in the science and space, space industry. It's, uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. It really was amazing. Um, and I say one of the, uh, one of the Irish guys, you know, that was all he could say. Just, Did you hear what she said? Did you hear what she said? She says, yeah, it was, it was brilliant. But yes, anyway, so <laughs> yeah, the children are the stars. This is the thing. Yeah, her name was Dominica. Dominica, that's, that's it. That's right, yes. I've forgotten Dominica. the name. Yeah. And you can see her at 52 minutes into the video yeah. link that yeah. I put up. I, I would yeah. uh, support your comment about Aris uh, and all the setup they had. I mean, it was truly impressive, everything yes. they brought along. Yes. And they were so slick in what they're doing. Because it wasn't just <laughs> the RF side of things, was it, Lloyd? I mean, it was no. a complete video mixing desk, audio mixing desk. They were very well organized well yeah. set up for this yeah. obviously they've done it before but not only that a, a full duplicated station uh, was it in the netherlands i think it was the, yeah that's right um so just in case everything and i mean everything had gone wrong in the uk yeah <laughs> then well, in some well, respect they could take over so one of the things again that i forgot to mention was the reason that um that the teacher brought the <laughs> laptop in was because we lost the video feed we lost the um the internet feed um so it just went dead uh so the schools the school the the majority of the school were watching in classrooms on a video feed uh and the internet died and so he then got a laptop pointing the, the camera at the stage so that um it could all go uh fortunately it came back on say not long after i did my talk so that was the best bit and uh and they did manage. We did manage to get it back on in time yeah. to. For apparently, the, for the Aris, <laughs> apparently, Aris had a, pro, a, a software glitch in their yeah. um, server of some kind, and uh, anyway, they they managed to sort an alternative backup solution so that yeah. it could all be broadcast live via yeah. YouTube or whatever. Um, but you're very mo modest, Lloyd, because you know my involvement was really quite small compared to what you were doing, and and it was. Really, uh, in some respects, it was lucky the school was for deaf children because a lot of swear words were being mumbled. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yes. Remember, they can lip read. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's but, a shame we didn't wear masks, really, because that would have been more <laughs> beneficial. Yeah, but the fact that, um, you know, some key things, serious, important things like the palantypist and the sign language or just was chaotic from the mm. school side. Uh, and Lloyd was still standing there visually looking calm but probably his stomach turning over <laughs> whatever was was quite incredible to you lloyd well done thank you well, it didn't feel like it at the time i didn't know what i was doing i think that was the thing <laughs> mm. so it sounds like there was a full telebridge backup with the ground station yes, in the there middle was. and so yeah, yeah, yeah that's a very very useful backup to have uh you know up, up your sleeve uh, if yeah. anything goes wrong and in fact that's primarily how all contacts across the usa are still being done right now it's via telebridge and with zoom type connections with students yeah. with some exceptions but that's generally how it's done well this, this was uh, one of the mm -hmm. sorry 
carry on. Yeah, yeah no, carry on. Mm. Yeah, we'll say this is this is one of the things that uh, this was one of the options uh, when they cancelled it. Uh, they said one of the things you can do is uh, we'll do a telly bridge, and I said, well, it's it's not really my choice; it's the school's choice. I'd I'd prefer not to. I'll ask the school, and they said, no, no, definitely not. We don't want to do a telly bridge. We want the equipment there. We want the children to see exactly what's going on. And and that was the thing. So, so it wasn't my decision, but it was it was what I wanted. <laughs> so yeah, otherwise it would have been a telly bridge, and I don't think it would have had the impact if it was mm. a telly bridge. Yeah. Did could you say what, what equipment they had? It was a uh, Kenwood uh, two thousand that they were using to do the voice link. Uh, when, when it's cool I don't know what you had at yours. I, 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 in all honesty, I, I, I didn't even look at the equipment. <laughs> I uh, say so the only the only bit of equipment I saw was a microphone and the big red button that I got in my hand, <laughs> and that was that was all I was interested in at the time. Um, I do regret it, but say the uh, not just the radio equipment, which say they they was fantastic. Um, the as Phil said, the 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 audio video section was. Mm. I mean, it, it it was just like a professional outside broadcast. In fact, I think it put the TV stations to shame with the equipment they got there. Yeah, it was it was fantastic. Oh, yeah. that's sorry to have another question here. Did, did <laughs> okay. you have the lo the, the local? TV did BBC come out or yes, any yes. of they did. Oh, fabulous! Yes. Yeah, yep. That's, we had. Mm. Um, the, I mean, I could run some video if you wanted, but um, we had the local BBC radio. Um, we also had the local independent, uh, not radio, sorry, television. So we had the BBC local TV and the independent local TV. Uh, with the BBC, we also then went national on that clip that I showed was from the national TV. Uh, that's what they ran. Um, but there's also a a TV program for the deaf called See Here, and we were we were on that as well. So uh, yeah. you yeah. could not have had such a big impact yeah. if it was Telebridge. Yeah, that's that's yeah, exactly. the real deal there. Yeah, exactly. It's sort of uh, and has magnified the reach and impact of what you've done. Yeah. So I just wanted to get this. So there are people. There are kids out there. Don't do don't do that. Weren't I've, there? I've started. <laughs> they weren't there, but they get to experience it for themselves. Yeah. I don't know. Here I, <laughs> it it's tearing me up, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the impact. It's not just that ten minutes of contact. No. It's everything that's now possible beyond there. So, wow, yeah. fabulous. I there you go, and I'm gonna I'm gonna disappear off the screen so I can wipe my eyes. <laughs> oh, thank you, Liam. <laughs> Bless you. I'd, I'd, I'd say there we've been go. talking about Telebridge. I don't know if any of you know um, what the Telebridge means. Um, with an Aris contact, there's there's two types of contact. You either have a, a direct contact where the radio equipment is sitting next to you, uh, or there's a Telebridge, which is basically a Zoom meeting, and that goes off. It could be anywhere in the world. Um, so obviously you can get a not specific time, but it's not critical on being dependent on on when you want it, so to speak, um, because it can use any relay station around the world. Um, we have quite a few contacts over the over the Europe that are from uh, Australia and uh, the US that are being relayed from um, usually Italy. I think there's one in Italy, one in Netherlands, one in Belgium. I can't remember. There's there's loads all over the all over the country that will do what they call this telebridge. Um, so really, all, for the children, all they're doing is, is like we're doing now, just sitting in front of a screen. I mean, it's it's good. It's an interaction, but it's not the same as, as having the microphone sitting next to you. Uh, or standing in front of you, which which was the big thing. Yeah. Anyone else got any questions? I've, I've got Terry, VFC. Go on, Terry. Terry? Yes, thank you. Hello, Lloyd. Hi. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. And 
You talk about tearing up. Well, I'm tearing <laughs> up now. <laughs> Just thinking about this. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to be in the tent with uh, uh, Kieran Olinaris, uh, contact with uh, youngsters on the air. Oh, uh, really? back in 20 was it 17 i think yeah and um so i have an idea of what goes on but in schools i believe that uh, there is an expectation that the school will have put in a lot of uh, um teaching time uh, about things to do with space or the world or yes. something like yes. that um did they do that and was there any opportunity to include not only the world, but the world of ham radio as a hobby and uh, uh, a learning and experience sort of thing? Well, uh, this was another thing. <laughs> um, I mean, I on our first meeting, when I went there, the first meeting, uh, I I said, how about having a, a fair, a science fair? Uh, we can get companies coming and explaining and showing things um my uh the company i work for is thermal imaging so i said we could have some thermal imaging cameras down there we can explain exactly what they do and, and what you can see with them uh and all all um all they kept coming up with is oh yeah uh i can get some dry ice i can get some dry ice I said, well yeah, look at the bigger picture we can have a you can have a week-long science fair but unfortunately, COVID, say we're, they, they were bang in the middle of COVID, and I think a lot of that took a hit with COVID. Um, but there wasn't as much of the sciencey side of it. Um, I can say I'm, I'm, I'm a scientist at heart still, and there wasn't enough teaching of the science side, of it, I don't think. But say it's a difficult thing because teachers are busy, and when, say, when they're trying to teach, say, either you know, with um, in a Zoom meeting or something, it's it's not that easy. So, yes, I, I believe there was quite a bit done, um, but not as much as I'd hoped. I said one of the other things I'd hoped was was the space food. You know, they they could freeze dry some food to 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 make space food with the liquid nitrogen that they were getting, um, and 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 all that sort of thing. But no, in the end, um, the the UK Space Agency do loan um, things out to schools and on the original contact we'd uh, we'd arranged to have moon rock uh, meteorites um, or loads of other things that you know that were all these science things and um, of course they had to be cancelled they did get some um, not not spacesuits, but sort of replica spacesuits in different sizes for the children. Uh, and we got some of the children down in the spacesuits using the, ra our, the, the NADAR's radio equipment, but we all forgot to take photos, which was a bit stupid, really, because, you know, they got all these children dressed in these full spacesuits using our equipment, and nobody thought about taking a photo, which was a shame. Um, but no, that, that was, hey, yeah, it, it was what could have been done um um you know but in the end the, the contact was the thing and and that was the that was the, the 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 crucial part yeah and very well done by the sounds of it too Thank um you. do you have any further contact have you had further contact with the school any follow up no no not the thing um they I, don't chase you yeah that's it i i had planned to send a copy of the radcom uh to them um the Radcom had promised to send me a couple of extras. Um, there's a a YouTube channel, um, Ham Live. Uh, Larry Defoe G. Oh, what's it? Um, K7HN uh, runs a show. He's, it's very good, and he invited me on. He he heard of it. One of our members saw this. Uh, saw him show. You know, playing the. Uh, a clip of the video uh and i i sent a message just, oh that was me you know uh, is there anything you'd like to know and anyway we had to do i did a whole 45 minute show with him on on the the contact it's a very big show out here in the states it, yeah run by yeah. twit tv i think yeah twit uh, as in this week in tet 
tech, not not yeah. the not the UK version of what twit means. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so mm. um, yeah, that was uh, so. So we we you know from just something so simple, we we did get some international um, some international coverage as well, which was great. Unfortunately, it's me who had to do the talking, as you probably noticed. I don't like talking. Um, in fact, uh, I'm not really a very good licensed amateur because uh, I've only actually spoken on my microphone about four times. Um, I, <laughs> I, I prefer video side of it. So I'm actually, um, this weekend, I will be um, fin finalizing my um, QO100 transmit station. I've, I've been receiving for wow. quite a while. So uh, this weekend, I'll, I'll finally get to transmit. Uh, but again, it's all really part of the ISS thing because the next time it's it goes back up there, I, I do want to try and do a, a contact, uh, an ATV contact. Yeah, SSTV uh, video is coming back absolutely, as yeah. you probably know. Yeah. Well, right? the SSTV is so, uh, still going. Mm -hmm. It's it's the mm -hmm. it's the live video, live video side of it. Yeah, not there. Exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh, that's dead at the moment, and it's still on, it's still in. Uh, yeah, uh, Aris has plans right. for their their own version of uh, of a uh, um, Astro Pi. It's an Aris Pi, so yeah, they have yeah. their their own gear going up that will allow a lot of direct interaction, uh, telemetry, um, you know, from their experiments that will be on the Aris side of the world uh, on the space station. Yeah, yeah, lots so, of amazing things. So amazing things are going to happen. Mm. Right. So, is, is anyone any other questions? Um, just as a thought, yeah. you mentioned QO yeah. one hundred, Lloyd. Yeah. Um, how about between you and Liam, uh, you convince the uh, uh, NASA to be able to contact through QO one hundred from the ISS? Yeah. Now that would be a well, uh, a world <laughs> first first. I think that would be. I, I think yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to research that. Right. Yeah, I, Google Q O one hundred relay. It's not, okay, so it's yeah. so Q O one hundred is obviously it's another it's geostationary, it's geostationary satellite. That's right. Yeah. 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 So and where is it geostationary over? Over um, pretty much. It doesn't cover North America. It covers some of South America, but it's mm -hmm. mainly Africa. Um, it's it's a Middle Eastern. It's S Hale, so it's mm. uh, it's a Middle Eastern Qatar yeah. that's set it up. So it's centered over them. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I suppose the 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 issue with that is because they're orbiting, and they're orbiting fast. They're tracking a geostationary satellite. Yeah, would be a bit more tricky. Uh, after trying to set up my receiving a few weeks ago. And the the swearing that was coming out from me trying to 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 line up a, a one and a half meter dish, <laughs> I think it might be a little bit difficult. But they should try it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they currently track uh, the TDRS satellites for the for the yeah. high high bandwidth communications. Um, you know, that's what this is live from the station right now. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know, that's through TDRS. Sorry, let me just switch back to. The live video feed um so yeah it would take a considerable new, new capability to have a an aris um antenna that's trackable unless it's got unless it's, there's some kind of a mm. vaguely um you know non-directional uh, kind of transmit receive antenna that they could put out there but that that's a big project presumably <laughs> it'd have to be on the other side of the station yes yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and uh, yes, and, exactly. Yeah. Okay, yeah. anyone else got uh, okay. another question or point to put to Lloyd? Uh, feel free to, to dive in. Everyone's gone very quiet now. That's it, yeah. <laughs> go on, Gerald. Go on, Gerald. Go again. Hello again. Yes, um, just interesting that last bit. But um, the other thing that, we, that the RSGB provided was some kits to make their own receivers. So I've got these 10, 11 year old children. So uh, the, uh, when it turned up, there were 10 receiver kits, but it was popular. The 25 or six children turned up wanting to make them. Yes. <laughs> oh. 
So there's always something, isn't there? That go, but yeah. anyway, I shared yeah. it now. Put them one between two. One put one resistor in the next jar. Put the next yeah. one. And they kept doing yeah. it like that until they built the kit. So. Oh, brilliant! So um, it's, 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 the 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 interactive part is is the crucial part. Always it is. is. Yeah. But they seem to love it, and uh, yeah. they all did lots of act. Uh, uh, so they went there all day. But after the concert, they were they were doing performances in the hall and on the stage yeah. and things like this. But as you said, dressed up in space suits and yeah, and all the rest of it. It oh, was excellent. fabulous to watch. Excellent. Um, oh. I've yeah. just noticed John. John is with us. Hello, John. Didn't see you pop up earlier. <laughs> yes, John is the star of the uh, the Nadar stand at the, and and if if he did send me a little link a couple of days ago, uh, from your newsletter, um, stating that he is on the front page, front and centre, and I'm not mentioned. <laughs> 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 which was which was actually the ploy all along. It was only Phil who actually persuaded them to put a photo of me in there. I said I, I didn't want anything of me in there. I've, I've wrote I wrote the article, um, but it's uh, it's it's everyone else that matters, not me. I was just uh, I was a stooge pressing a button. <laughs> okay. I think you're downplaying your role, Tad Lloyd. I think. No, uh, no. <laughs> I think I, I seriously, I, I can tell by your your enthusiasm for the subject and uh, you know your excitement. Um, but I, I do I do suggest to everyone just have a look at that video and just look at it. Tune into forty six minutes when Lloyd makes his first call and then gets the static and stands there and then makes the call again and it get that that two and a half minutes before they responded, must have felt, Lloyd, like about two and a half hours. It did. It did. I, I, I think it was five attempts, wasn't it, Lloyd? Before five they, altogether, I think. Yeah. yeah. Before you actually got heard. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a record. I've, I've <laughs> certainly been on somewhere. They didn't get, because there, were a, there was a technical issue um, yeah. on the station and they had to switch radios or do something. And But we just got to... Uh, halfway through the contact we 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 got contact yeah. and we still managed to get uh, um yeah everyone asked a question uh, of the yeah. 12 students um so even with half the time available yeah it's it i say so this this is one of the things i've i've listened to so many and i've i've seen so many where you know it's it's there's just been nothing at all and there was no contact and it was dead and the, there was either a problem with the school station Excuse me, or a problem with the with the ISS. There's always something, and I'm thinking, yeah, it's, it's just one of those days. We're not going to do it, and then poof, there we were. We were, yeah. But the um, see, one of the other things I mentioned the attenuation of the signal. The first few minutes, um, the the signal from the station was very crackly and wasn't very clear, and I thought, oh, hope it's going, hope it's not going to be that bad all the way through. And it was when it was clear in the trees. And as soon as it cleared the trees and we got perfect line of sight, boom, the signal just came through. And just, woof, that was it. Um, yeah, it was it was fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> right. Anyway, anyone else got a question or comment they want to put to Lloyd or Phil? Yes, Jeff. Jeff. Hello, Lloyd. Brilliant. Thank you Hi. very much for this. I, I can imagine that parents were very proud of their children. Did you get any reactions from them? I didn't, unfortunately. The the um, because it's a boarding school, um, so the parents weren't allowed to be there um, because basically they had to have a, a a pod of not a pod. What do they call them? Uh, you know a, the a, a bubble. A, a bubble. That was it. Yeah, a, a, um, a social COVID, bubble. COVID situation. But yeah, because of COVID, so the parents couldn't be there. But yes, the the a lot of the children were saying that their parents were so proud that they were they were there, and I say I'm, I'm I was so proud they were there. So I can imagine what the parents were like. Yeah. But it was still a very incredible sight. I mean, this auditorium, the Arlington Centre, is a modern yeah. theatre basically. So you have stage seating going sorry the stage and the seating going up 
into the gods, and uh, it was pretty much full. A it few, was, few yeah. spare seats um, taken up with students and teachers, of course. Yeah, uh, and that was really quite amazing. It really yeah. was, and of course, being broadcast around all the rest of the school. Um, well. Most yeah. of the time, <laughs> when it worked. <laughs> yeah, and was it a live stream actually out yes, to the yeah, world yeah, as well? Yes, yeah, it was a live so, stream at the same so time. So parents yeah. were watching. They were on watching that on that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, but that was that was the problem at the beginning. So mm. it got it got fixed just in time for the actual contact, the radio contact to take place. But all of the really interesting talks that went on before the UK Space Agency was, you didn't mention Lloyd. Um, that was, yeah, that was the, who I meant. Doc, yeah. Doctor, whatever her name was. Um, it, it was incredible, yeah. the Q&A. So all of that part should have been live streamed around the world. Um, but uh, that's when the school teacher come up with a laptop saying, trying to point to everybody saying it is not streaming <laughs> yeah uh, and um yeah. Anyway, cut a long story short aris in their amicable way they always found a solution a backup solution and yeah. eventually got the good bits live um so the live stream didn't uh, broadcast everything however the link i put on the, ch the zoom chat just now <laughs> um which goes to our radio club's website uh, that has the full video so right from the very first talk, right through to the last, yeah. give us yeah. a... One, one of the other things that, um, so it, it, it put a lump in my throat while I was talking at the, at the beginning and, and while everyone else was talking on the stage, there were children in the auditorium sign languaging to other children next to them. And yeah, okay, you're not allowed to sign language here, but yeah, they they were... They were tra they were translating everything into sign language for for other students, uh, and I thought well, that's you know that's just fantastic how the whole community of the school worked together to uh, to make sure everybody enjoys everything. So, yeah. <laughs> right. Anyone so, else if, uh... anyone else with a question to Lloyd or Phil um, on the contact? Deaf, if not, deaf, deaf you... children, deaf children might be deaf, but they're certainly not quiet. That's one. No. I would make. <laughs> <laughs> they're I'd a noisy bunch that. of kids, and I was <laughs> I was sat in the audience while I was watching Lloyd up there, and yeah, <laughs> very noisy. Yeah. Yeah. It, Brilliant. Ian's just Ian's also posted in the chat the uh, the local news uh, video. Yes. Yeah, I just saw that. Yeah. From ITV as well. Um, yeah. That night, so quite a few well, bits there. I uh, I do have I, I have recorded everything that uh, that I was told about, so I've got the the ITV. So if anybody did want it, I could could make it available. <laughs> so it's it's pretty much all the same. I just the reason I showed the BBC the main BBC one was because there was no presenters doing anything on it. It was uh, it was just really the the children doing the talking, which I thought was the best bit. Mm. Um, but we did have. Um, Oh dear, my brain's gone again. Um, oh, uh, Fred Dynage. Fred Dynage did do one of his final broadcasts about us, so <laughs> so I was really pleased with that. Um, do you get Fred Dynage in uh, up there with the? Is it? I don't know if it's just Hampshire. Is it? I don't know what area. I think, that's I think that's they're that's just, just down here. Down yeah, uh, yeah. That's just a southern one. It is a southern one, yeah. It is. It is. Um... He hasn't got a passport to go north. No, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but I mean, all of you are of the age where you must remember how. So, uh, yeah. So Fred Dynage from How, retired from broadcasting this year. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lloyd, okay, so I'll, I'll think I'll wrap that up. Oh, go on. Yep. Yeah, before you go, can we show our appreciation to Lloyd and to Phil and all those involved uh, from, from uh, Newbury and setting it up? Well done, everyone. Really good. Thank you. Making me blush now. <laughs> um, well, I, I'll give the final word to, to Lloyd, to you and to Phil, if you want to just wrap it all up. So. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, yeah, we'll say thank you so much for for inviting me on and uh, sorry Phil didn't get much of a talk but uh, so I am the quiet one usually <laughs> okay thank you very much and uh, have a have a good evening yeah well, well done from Denbydale Re really impressive and uh, 
it was a good write-up of yours, Lloyd, in Radcom, and an even better presentation. So um, thank you. And, and don't put yourself down. Your <laughs> communication was brilliant. I was watching. I was watching on the screen the reactions of some of our members, including those not in the UK. So English not being their first language, who were following you intently. I could see in their expressions. <laughs> that, uh, uh, so no, well done. Really thank impressive. You. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I'm just going to stop the recording.